These students are the next generation of beekeepers in Ontario. They are the first to go through Niagara College's commercial beekeeping program, the only one of its kind in Eastern Canada. They started off in the first term in January, um, really learning the foundations, so honeybee health, um, entomology of bees, ecology of pollinators, and then the second term, which ran in the spring and summer, was really hands-on, so getting in the hives as much as possible. The program was the first time many of the students had been up close to a honeybee, let alone a hive. What did I know about bees other than they fly around and they like flowers? Not much. Courses run parallel to the life cycle of a honeybee, starting in the winter, when bees are less active, to honey extraction in the spring and summer months. They're uncapping and extracting and removing all the honey. The program was created to meet a growing demand of beekeepers in the country. Statistics Canada estimates a need for more than 3,600 commercial beekeepers by 2026. Ontario has the largest number of beekeepers. Last year, there were about 3,000 in the province, accounting for 40% of beekeepers in Canada. The industry, I mean, is really varied in Ontario in that you have small-scale beekeepers and then huge, large operations. The bees themselves, the hive has so many different functions and properties from propolis to using the wax for candles and soap and cosmetics and the honey can be used to be eaten. Marion St. Gillet Marco plans to open up her own pollination company upon graduation. She already has 50 hives and is looking to build on that and offer her bee services across Ontario. One of the, the ecology classes we took in this program talked about bees and how we use a lot of their native uh, lands and things and we use them and we build on them so we tear down a lot of what they can use. We're near Morriston, Ontario in Wellington County and we're in one of my bee locations, we call it the Mast Yard, approximately 170 colonies growing here. Most of the bees are down here because they're still growing into that other box. Hey? Tibor Sabo is a beekeeper in Puss Lynch, Ontario, and drives nearly a kilometer through heavily wooded terrain to get to his hives. It's one of a few places where his bees can thrive. What I do is I produce the bees themselves. I produce queen bees and colonies for sale to beekeepers. Uh, for a productive hive, it's an economically um, beneficial to change your queen every couple years. So you have a new queen in the hive. They're far, far more productive and you have better winter success. One of the fastest growing sectors of commercial beekeeping is pollination services. Although wild populations of honeybees and native pollinators help in crop pollination, they can't be relied on year to year. Changing weather patterns, loss of habitat, pesticides and mite infestation means beekeepers are needed to move their bees to help farmers. Hives are loaded onto trucks like this and sent to farms to pollinate various fruits and vegetables. You do need pollinators um, as you move uh, across the provinces. Their temperatures are, as we go out east, it's cooler. So they really need our bees from here because they're uh, more robust in the springtime when they need to pollinate things like blueberries. It changed from honey many years ago to pollination service. It used to be honey was how most beekeepers made their income. Now, most of the income comes from the pollination service and honey is second. The switch from honey to pollination has been compounded by the dropping market price of honey over the past few years. The number one issue for, in my own operation and from my own experience is pesticide poisoning. Really crazy that you can't keep a beehive alive in a lot of parts of Ontario because the environment's too toxic. In 2014, some of Sabo's hives, along with 58% of the colonies in Ontario, perished over the winter. Sabo says pesticides such as neonicotinoids, which are used on corn, soybeans and canola seeds to protect crops against insects, are to blame. In 2015, the province introduced stricter regulations on its use. The pesticide gets into the plant system, including the nectar and pollen, which is eaten by honeybees. It also gets into native plants, like goldenrod, one of the last nectar sources for bees in the season. It fills the hives with honey for winter, it fills them with good quality pollen for winter, and it's, it's actually a blessing for southern Ontario beekeepers. However, around every agricultural field in this area, solid goldenrod almost. The chemicals are mobile, they leach, they don't discriminate which plant will pick them up. And they get into the, uh, the resources of the bees and the bees bring those resources in at this time of year. 
According to Sabo, a honeybee can travel over three kilometers for food, which means even his bees are prone to pesticide poisoning. One of the symptoms I can see on hives, on hives that are, or yards that are experiencing poisoning is thousands of bees in the grass and they can't fly, so they just fall down. The story of the modern honeybee has been well publicized and according to Sabo, this has ultimately had a positive effect on the industry. The one good thing about all this terrible pesticide poisoning on our pollinators is it's caused public awareness. They're curious, they want to they try it. They want to help bees, they want to keep some under their own management. Maybe they believe they got a good healthy spot for them. Whatever the reason, it's caused a lot of new people to discover bees and get into it. And that's a positive. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit TVO.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.